things I care. We understand the system deeply and we are driving operational excellence. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Tech. My name is Ron Haskell. I'm the Director of Communication for VA's Office of Information Technology. And it's a pleasure to be your host again today. This episode is a special one. Special not only do we have the Department of Veterans Affairs top two tech leaders with us in studio today, the special in that 2023 was a groundbreaking year for digital transformation at VA. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit about that success and how we're using that momentum to ensure we remain a top example of excellence in government IT. But before I turn it over to our guests, remember, Talking Tech is more than just a broadcast, it's a dialogue. At the end of today's episode, we'll invite you to participate in our interactive Q&A session. So please feel free to post your questions in the comments section for a chance to have them answered live here. All right, sitting to my left is Mr. Kurt Delbeni. Kurt is the Assistant Secretary for Information and Technology and the Chief Information Officer for VA. And next to him is Mr. Charles Worthington, the Chief Technology Officer at VA. Kurt, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You're candid internally and externally about the organization setting goals and expectations for getting us to excellence uh, in your estimation. How do we do in 2023? I think we made an incredible amount of progress in 2023. Um, and there's a lot that OIT and our team can feel really proud of as we transformed uh, in a record number of veterans, their access to care and their benefits um, through the state of the art technology we, we provide. We now rank first among our peer groups in the federal government. That's agencies over 100,000 employees, according to the OMB and GSA. Um, our IT and strategic planning functions also rank number one across our peer group. That's what I'm particularly proud of because that ability to stay focused on what the top level of vision is and what the how the plans and roadmaps connect is really, really important. I'm glad to see we're doing so well there. And our results reinforce that our customer satisfaction is also super good. So uh, monthly IT customer satisfaction is almost 81%, 80.9%, and service satisfaction at 93.2%. And we closed 2.5 million help desk tickets with almost three quarters of them being within 24 hours. Um, thanks to D VA's digital front door, which I'm super proud of, VA.gov is now supporting a record 13 million monthly logons. We doubled the, our online Veterans Legacy Memorial Program to nearly 10 million veterans and provided dignified resting places for a record 5.4 million people, including 4.1 million veterans. In fact, this year, VA delivered more care and more benefits to more veterans than ever before. I couldn't be more proud of OIT's contributions and the whole team's contributions um, to VA reaching these really important goals. Awesome. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, Charles, you guys have a huge role in uh, technology. Obviously, you're the chief technology officer in getting this going. What are some things you're proud of that uh, you guys were able to accomplish in 2023? Thanks, Ron. Yeah, I, I feel like, uh, and I often say this, that I might have the best job in the entire government because I get to help improve veterans' lives with better software. And that's really the core goal of, of me and uh, the team in the office of the CTO. Uh, I've got a, you know, a lot of things that we're really proud of, but I think the, the overall goal of the work that we have is to make it really easy for veterans and other beneficiaries to access those services that they've earned. Um, and we've, we've made a lot of strides towards that. As you mentioned, we've got a lot of people logging in uh, to the website. And I'm also really uh, proud of the work that we've done to make these services more accessible from our flagship uh, health and benefits mobile app. Uh, this is a way that we are making it easy for our current beneficiaries to access the most used uh, services that they they have with the VA. The things that they come to uh, rely on the VA for, things that they're logging in uh, again and again to do, we've been able to deliver a lot of those in a really streamlined way that I know we're gonna talk more about. Uh, just to give you a couple more examples of some of the things we've done over the past uh, year or so, uh, one is we really worked on the way that people can apply for healthcare benefits. Obviously, that's one of the most important things that VA offers. And uh, thanks to the PACT Act, which was a flagship piece of leg legislation, uh, we have, the VA has expanded the number of people that are eligible for health benefits, including uh, with a special enrollment period that ended in September. Uh, and in September, over 40,000 people applied for VA health care for the first time, uh, which was uh, by far the biggest month that we've had on VA.gov in terms of the volume of health care submissions. And not only did we make it possible for people to apply online, which I like to think is the easiest way to do so, uh, we also were able to streamline the application process for uh, specific veterans 
basically, when we know uh, who the person is that's applying for healthcare, we're able to cut down the length of time that that form takes by avoiding asking questions that we might already know the answer to. Uh, or in the case of a, a veteran that already has a disability rating, we know that they're eligible for certain types of healthcare without asking uh, a bunch of other questions. So we're able to cut down the, uh, the time that it takes or the number of questions we ask. So that's just one example of some of the work we're doing to try to make the way to apply for benefits online as easy as possible. Uh, and like I said, that mobile app, we're really proud of. Uh, we just hit a really exciting milestone there uh, of 2 million downloads, which I know we're gonna talk a little bit more about. So lots of great stuff happening across the VA. Let's go ahead and just get into that, Charles. Yeah. Um, the Health and Benefits mobile app is really um, something we're all very proud of. The numbers that we had, as you mentioned, 2 million. Um, what's some of the background? How did that come about? How did that, the process to build that? And then what's some of the data behind that? I know our satisfaction is very high. We've promoted that on the show uh, before, but let's tell us a little sure. more about that. Yeah, you know, the, the mobile project really uh, came about when we, first of all, looked at the data. Uh, and we noticed that every, every month we were seeing more and more of VA's web traffic coming from smartphones. And that's probably no surprise to uh, the audience out here. Uh, we, we know that uh, just in our own lives, at least for my uh, own life, I use my smartphone to do pretty much everything. And we were seeing that same in, in the data. And, and in fact, uh, often most months, uh, we see more traffic coming from smartphones than we do from PCs, from desktop PCs to our websites. So that's a sign that people are really relying on their phones as a way to access VA information. Now, our, our VA website is designed to work well on small screens, and so you can go to va.gov today, and it'll, you, know, it, you can tell that it was thoughtfully designed to work well on a mobile device. But when we sat down and talked to veterans, uh, they told us that they would really appreciate a way to more easily access those services that they, uh, as I mentioned, they rely on us for time and time again. So things like messaging your doctor or checking on the status of a, a healthcare appointment, um, things that people are doing many different times uh, over the course of a month or a year. Uh, it, it was clear to us by talking to veterans that if we could deliver those in a mobile app, that it could make it easier for some veterans to access those services by using things like the biometric uh, features of, of mobile phones. Uh, and so we knew we could make it faster, for example, to log in by using your, your face ID or your, your touch uh, fingerprint. Uh, and so when we first launched the app, we, we did it kind of quietly. Uh, we wanted to get some data on how well it was working. So we just we put it in the app store, and it didn't take long for a lot of veterans to find it, download it, and start using it. Uh, and today, as, a, as we've talked about, we've just recently hit 2 million uh, downloads, but, but probably more importantly, we're seeing nearly a million monthly active users of the app. So that just means in a given month, uh, over 900,000 unique veterans are using the app at least one time in that month. And they're doing things like messaging their, their doctor, uh, checking on the status of a claim. They can look at their appointments, including getting directions to uh, a VA facility or getting a phone number of the specific clinic that they're going to go visit. Uh, so we're really trying to offer all of those services that veterans use repeatedly over the course of their, uh, their interaction with the VA and make it super easy for them to access the services from their phone. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, we're really proud that veterans really seem to be responding to it, not just by downloading it, but also by giving us feedback. Uh, and we've got a 4.8 star rating in the Apple App Store with over 100,000 ratings uh, and a 4.6 rating in the Google Play Store. So those are numbers that we, uh, we want to even improve on, but we're, we're pretty proud of and I think is a sign that we're meeting veterans where they are and where they want us to be. Yeah, I would add to um, just 4.6, 4.8. Uh, a testament to taking that input, as you mentioned, up front. Uh, and those numbers are on par with some really top apps um, that all people use, yeah, correct? I think yeah. I was looking recently, uh, Amazon has a 4.8 star, American Airlines, Bank of America. 4.8 stars seems to be about as good as you can get, uh, unless you're doing something totally awesome. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're happy with that number. Uh, and we're, we're hoping to launch even more features into the app in the coming year. Uh, for example, we've got uh, planned a ability to more easily view more of your medical records. So things like lab results, uh, as well as allergies. Um, we also are expecting to make it easier for veterans to check in to their appointments. So on the day of an appointment at a medical center, they'll be able to indicate to the staff that, hey, I'm here uh, and check in right from the app. Um, so that's just a few of the things that we're gonna be launching in the coming year in the mobile app. Uh, really just trying to focus on, as I said, those things that veterans do repeatedly 
And by making it in the app, it's, it provides kind of a faster way to get to those products. I can't even check in for my health appointment myself uh, with my mobile app. So that would be a place where we're kind of on the leading edge even. Yeah, in some cases. Uh, you know, and I, I think VA has long been a leader in digital health care. Obviously, our telehealth program saw a huge spike uh, in the pandemic. But really, we've seen those numbers continue, people accessing uh, our services using, um, using a video uh, appointment. Um, but even before the pandemic, VA has been a leader in things like our patient experience, our digital patient experience, and the My Healthy Vet patient portal. Uh, millions of people use that product to access their health care. And the, the app is really just a way to make those existing experiences even better. Great. All right, Kurt, any uh, more thoughts on reflecting back on 2023? No, I, I think overall it's been a great year. I think we um, spent a ton of time kind of focusing our efforts on having a clear vision uh, for each of the, um, the major areas we invest in. I think people kind of lose track of the scope of uh, the VA overall, largest integrated healthcare provider, one of the largest benefits providers in the United States as well. And so you've really got to be super focused uh, to get at the highest priority work that's done across this very vast place. And I think the team has done a great job at kind of saying, what's the wheat and what's the chaff? What's the most important thing for us to focus on getting engaged with stakeholders and actually making that a back and forth conversation where we don't basically just say, tell us what you, what you want us to do. We say, this is what we understand about your vision. This is how we have translated that into a set of systems that support that. Um, but let's now have a back and forth dialogue to the give and take of saying, you know, you've, you've asked us you want us to add this. Where does that stack rank? As we see your priorities, they look like this. And um, I think the VA as an organization has really exceeded my expectations. You know, I've only been here a little over two years now. And somebody comes in from the commercial side and says, wow, that's big government. Ultimately, the VA is led by a, a bunch of people who care very deeply about delivering service to veterans. And it comes across in the engagement that you have with the leaders, whether in the healthcare space, the memorial space, or the benefit space, and that's been really refreshing. Awesome. So you mentioned about your your priorities, yeah. Uh, yeah. and how that sort of guides us towards what we're going for. Yeah. Let's talk about the future then. How does um, with your priorities? What are you looking at for 2024 for OIT and VA? Well, in a lot, we're looking at more of the same. We're looking about um, setting, having a clear vision around healthcare, and how does that uh, um, kind of do the next click down. We have a very important program around electronic health care um, records management, as many people know about. We have a lot of initiatives around things like scheduling. Um, you know, that is the front door to your care in the healthcare space. Um, and so having the uh, fantastic scheduling engine that everybody who triages with customers, with, with patients, I should say, um, has a great experience to find just that right care. I think that's a really critical part of what we're doing. Um, in the healthcare, in the benefit space, uh, we have really been driven around having more effective adjudications of benefits applications, but also speeding the time for which when people can um, can get the decision because that's what they want ultimately. And especially with the PACT Act um, adding new people who can get healthcare and benefits from us, it really puts a higher uh, premium around being able to do things like automation. So a lot of these uh, adjudications, there's a lot of that prep work that has to be done by um, somebody, who, the agent who's figuring it out. We can automate a lot of that and speed the time for, to a veteran actually hearing one way or the other whether they got those benefits. And so that all comes down to, again, being vision driven, having uh, plans and execution plans that are prioritized. One of the pieces of work I feel really good about is we have stack ranked each and every feature that we uh, have in our portfolio about what its priority is against delivering on the mission. And that's all about having a plan that is well connected to that top level vision and the priorities of the organization. And then having measures of success. We put in place um, uh, key performance uh, KPIs that we're measuring, key performance indicators, um, OKRs, uh, our chief goals that we have for the year. And we're tracking them on a semester basis and on a monthly basis to see, okay, these are the things, the objectives and key results that we as an organization are trying to accomplish. 
how are we doing? What do we need to tweak in the system? Very much as the commercial system works. I think people, if they uh, went from the commercial space to the, the VA, I think they would be pleasantly surprised how things like agile development, being focused on OKRs, being mission driven, and having a connected execution plan kind of stitch all the way together in, in everything we do every day. And some of those OKRs we're talking about, I know is multi-factor authentication, yeah. We're talking software development going through the software factory. Are there any other key ones that you you would highlight? Well, I definitely would highlight the security aspect and multi-factor authentication, but I broaden that to we're very uh, focused around zero trust, the whole notion that your the boundary of your organization is, a, is in some cases a permeable boundary and you have to have um, protections in place assuming that somebody can get in and making sure they can't actually access that critical data. I think that's absolutely key. And each part of the business though, we have things we want to, we need to get accomplished. If you ask people that are working on financial systems for VHA and being able to um, properly bill, we have objectives there. We have objectives in the scheduling space. We have objectives even in like the call center space. We're bringing together disparate systems for the VHA uses to an in integrated call center experience where the automated call pops, you know who that person is or what we know about them, and you can immediately get them to the care that they need. And so in each and every place, I think we've got a really focused set of priorities that we're driving against. Great. So a lot of success in 23, still a lot of work to do. Tons. Okay. Um, Charles, how about you? What's... what's um what are you looking forward to in the CTO office this year? Yeah, well, you know, as I mentioned, our, our goal is to really improve veterans' lives with better software, and the VA offers a lot of opportunity for doing that. Um, a couple of the things, you know, an overarching theme, I think, in the work we're doing is that we want the digital channel uh, to be the fastest, most reliable, and easiest way for benefits to get the things they need from the VA, so that basically any veteran that wants to use a digital experience to access VA care uh, or benefits should be able to, and that has a ton of benefits. Uh, it helps with automation and streamlining processes to you know, be working in data instead of paper uh, or phone calls. Uh, and also it provides us those opportunities, like I was mentioning, to uh, only ask questions that we don't already know the answer to by streamlining forms based on data that we already know. So we've got a, a number of things in that portfolio that are coming up uh, in the coming year. Um, probably one of the most exciting is we're going to be giving a refresh to our healthcare tools. Um, those My Healthy Vet patient portal features uh, that are accessible on the website today, uh, those are going to be still accessible but are going to be uh, upgraded and integrated with the rest of the VA.gov platform in a way that will make them more powerful and easier to use. So we're really excited about some of the changes that we're going to be making to our healthcare experience. Uh, I also am really excited about some of the work we're doing to improve the usability of systems, not just for veterans, but also for the VA staff that use the software we create. Uh, we have a team right now that's working on ensuring that all of our most important systems within the VA portfolio are measuring uh, user satisfaction or usability of their software, and that they're able to kind of keep a list of, you know, what are the top pain points that my users have with my system? Uh, as, as you mentioned, you know, the VA is a huge place. I think we've got 450,000 or more uh, employees. Uh, that's uh, over one in a thousand Americans works for the VA. So it's a, it's a big uh, audience when you think about it that way of just people that work at the VA to deliver services to, better, uh, to veterans. And making sure that we know how well our software is working for those employees, I think is also a very important goal. So we're gonna make some progress on measuring our end users' satisfaction with those, those services. Uh, and, you know, I, I think you, you can't uh, work in tech these days without hearing about artificial intelligence. Uh, it's sort of the, the hot uh, topic in, uh, in a lot of tech conversations right now. Uh, I think VA is really well positioned to adopt artificial intelligence even more than we already have uh, because we've been working on this for several years. You know, we've got a, uh, a group, the National Artificial Intelligence uh, a, um, the NIE uh, group that's been really thinking about how VA could safely adopt AI inside of the healthcare domain. Uh, and we're gonna be expanding on that work and really looking at ways to safely scale up the use of some of these novel technologies in, uh, the, in the VA workflows where it makes sense. Uh, and I think that the, there's a lot of opportunities to use this technology to make VA software work better for our staff and for veterans. Great. Yeah, you, viewers would be interested to know there's no production crew. This is all run by AI. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, kidding. Don't somebody don't write that. Um, all right. We've got uh, a few minutes left. Well, we have several minutes left. Ten minutes uh, for Q and A. And so, uh, put your questions in. Keep them coming. I know that we have a few that have come in. So we're going to go ahead and transition to some of those if you guys are ready for that. Sure. Great. Um, so the first one coming up, um, Kurt, you touched a little bit about this on, on how priorities sort of guide us and where we're going. How do the priorities contribute to the overarching goal of providing world-class health care and benefits through IT? Well, I think really it does come back to this uh, focus that I mentioned around having a vision which is connected to uh, a view of how stakeholders, so for instance, the senior leadership in VHA or senior le leadership in BBA see the services that they need to deliver. So we define a vision, we define a roadmap that implements that vision, and that connectedness um, is really what keeps us focused. It's very, very easy to get driven by, hey, somebody from uh, the consuming organization says, I need this extra feature in this system. And we have this conversation that brings them back to how do you prioritize that relative to everything else that you want us to do? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges we have is we're in a, um, a challenging finan financial environment in terms of funding overall for the government, so we have to make choices. And we have to prioritize things very, very crisply. And um, so what we want to do is basically make sure that every dollar is focused directly on the most important missions for the VA and that we're using every dollar super, super focused and effectively to deliver on that mission. Okay. Um, let's continue down that, uh, the road when we talk about challenges. You mentioned a challenging financial environment. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting to see if uh, the government's gonna be funded tomorrow or not. Um, what are some other challenges that OIT is facing uh, to achieve goals in 2024? Well, I think the first one, again, is the, the, the financial situation that we find ourselves in. We have a huge amount, and then the second one very related to that is the huge amount of complexity and um, uh, legacy that we have in the VA. We run something like a thousand different systems. They're on multiple clouds and on-premises. Um, we, uh, in addition to that, we run across 2,900 different locations across the United States. Um, over 700,000 uh, desktops that we're running as well. So the complexity is enormous. We have to balance maintaining that status quo of all those systems which, with which ones we're going to sunset, which ones we need to proactively move people away from, which ones we need to modernize. That is a very, very challenging task and really gets us towards this um, merciless focus on every dollar needs to count. It's also something we need to inculcate in everybody in the team because they're the ones that are the eyes and ears that see it at every level and every location of like, is this a dollar we really need to spend or should we spend it somewhere else? Mm -hmm. The second goal I think is around people. Um, we've done some real good work. Uh, we've talked about the special salary rate right in the past and bring those, uh, those salaries up to where the industry is, but having great uh, trajectories for people through their, through their careers I think is super, super important for us. And then the second one, I, or the third one I'd probably mention is, as Charles touched on, with things like AI, we need to have people kind of have two things in their mind as, at the same time. How do I push forward things in the here and now, and where am I going in the long run? What is healthcare going to look like in the long run, which is going to be very tech-focused more and more over time with things like telehealth and AI uh, for diagnostics, for f helping physicians do, uh, be more effective. We have to have people who, with a foot in each side seeing the far future and the near future and integrating that into a roadmap. Cool anecdote, um, just on a personal level, uh, you talk about monitoring systems and all that. Uh, I had a tech reach out to me and say, we noticed that your computer's uh, mm -hmm. not operating, and that blew me away. And within the two days, I had a new machine that I didn't realize how poorly mine was it's, running. The, the whole notion <laughs> of being able to put telemetry on the desktop and proactively improve the experience is, um, is a huge opportunity. Yeah, terrific, um, for, for me especially in this scenario. Um, okay, next one uh, is for you, Charles. How does VA Health and Benefits mobile app gather feedback from veteran community? Um, and I know you mentioned we, you did that up front. Um, to what extent is community input considered in shaping future updates? And improvements. We get this question a lot, and we get it from the Hill a lot about um, not taking enough uh, input or things from 
uh, from veterans. I know it's very important to what you guys do in the CTO. So how does how can veterans give input? Yeah, we have a really robust uh, veteran user experience research program, and that program is designed to get feedback from the users of our systems of all different uh, you know ages, military branches. Uh, we also do a lot of testing with people that are using assistive devices uh, or have another disability that makes the way they experience uh, digital experiences different than others. Uh, and we are really proud of that practice. And I'd actually love to do a little call to action right now if there's any veterans listening that want to get involved. You can go to veteranusability.us. Uh, that's where we recruit veterans to actively participate in these user, user research um, studies that we do, but basically every time we're looking at uh, the way that a feature works in the mobile app or uh, an improvement that we're making to the website, we're doing a lot of different usability testing with veterans uh, as that feature is getting built uh, and taking their input into, into the uh, process of building the features. Uh, so we, we do a lot of active co-design, we call it, with veterans and other beneficiaries. Uh, and in fact, one of the um, you know, most important, there's lots of <laughs> important reasons to do this, but uh, sometimes you'll hear things that really uh, surprise you or you didn't expect. Um, so for example, in the mobile app, we learned pretty early on that uh, providing veterans a way to easily access the letters, uh, there's a variety of letters that VA can provide veterans that do things like um, show their veteran status if they're applying for uh, a certain type of benefit, uh, maybe at the state level that re requires this letter. Uh, making a really easy way to access those letters wasn't something that we initially expected would be uh, a super high, highly demanded feature in the app, but that has turned out to be one of the most used features, I think because it's so easy to just get you know, a PDF of the letter right there from the app uh, whenever you need it, that that has become a, one of the top used features of the app. And that really came from talking with veterans. Uh, and just to give you one more anecdote, you know, the mobile uh, devices have a lot of assistive features built into them. So, um, you know, blind veterans, for example, that are experiencing the app using the voiceover or the screen reader type features. Uh, we have done a lot of testing to make sure that our features work well with those communities. And uh, we recently launched the ability for a veteran to download their decision letter for a disability claim uh, digitally, uh, both on the web and in the app. And I, I remember hearing one of the anecdotes from our usability testing with a blind veteran who was uh, so happy with this feature because she said it was the first time that she was able to, uh, to read the decision that the VA had made about her benefits herself, uh, as in you know, she was able to get the, uh, the phone to read it to her uh, in the comfort of her own, pri you know, the privacy of her own room uh, without having somebody else have to read a paper letter that she got in the mail. And that was something that was really, I think, impactful to her and is one of the main benefits we get from doing all this usability testing. Yeah, I, 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 I almost get emotional every time I hear that story, uh, you know, because I, I know that it means a lot to, to people and that we're, when you take the usability, it's a wide range. It's veteran across the, across the board. Um, we got a time for a couple more. Um, this one, Charles, I think we sort of touched on um, how have the achievements in 23 shaped the experience for veterans accessing care. We just talked about that uh, particular scenario, um, but then benefits through technology. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the themes uh, of the digital experience over the, the past year and certainly in the coming year is we're really focusing uh, on the reliability of those services. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of the past few years making sure that we had built out and modernized a lot of the digital experiences. And we're now uh, really taking advantage of the, uh, the funds that Congress has given us under the Toxic Exposure Fund and the PACT Act to shore up some of the underlying ways in which VA.gov and the mobile app work. And so I think veterans should notice snappier experiences, uh, things that are more background improvements. You know, it's nerdy things like how our content management system works. Uh, you know, I, I saw an example just came across la a week ago where we now have a a canonical place in our technology stack where the phone numbers for uh, mental health access are stored. And so now any system across the VA can point to that one backend you know, canonical source and have the correct number. So that small, sounds like a small thing, and it, I guess it is a small thing, but these are um, sort of the, 
the underlying, under the hood technical improvements that we're making to make this portfolio really sustainable uh, for the long term. So I think that's gonna be a, a big focus for our team in this coming year is really uh, shoring up the reliability, the speed, uh, the security of our core systems. And that, you know, that really comes down to something I said earlier, it's about a relentless focus, engineering focus on the complex set, set of systems we run. We have, we've defined a set of critical and bedrock systems sort of the, as the names imply, the ones we absolutely depend upon. Mm -hmm. And we're driving high reliability, um, active, active configurations or, or places where we can fail over to uh, the, the backup seamlessly to end users. We're looking at uh, what the time to recover those systems is and relentlessly driving that down, taking uh, incident, major incidents caused by change and driving that down as well. And it's that same, as I said, if you were in the commercial side of the, of the house, not the federal side, these are all the things that you would expect to see, and that's exactly what you see in the VA as well. Okay. I'm told we got three more questions. Uh, I might pose this to each of you. Charles, I'll let you go first. What innovative enterprise tech trends are you most excited about in 2024 and beyond? Well, uh, you know, I guess we talked about this a little bit already, but artificial intelligence is obviously uh, the word of the day. Uh, and VA, I think, has already led in AI, as I mentioned, over the past several years. But I think in the coming year, uh, and especially the next few years, we're really going to see a lot of those solutions reach uh, scale. Uh, and I'm excited to see how that could uh, improve various aspects of our software. Uh, we're taking, I think, a pretty measured approach. You know, obviously, these uh, technologies are new, and we want to make sure we're adopting them safely, uh, as well with with a lot of um, communication and training to our staff about what they can and can't do. I think there are sometimes misperceptions about, you know, what what is uh, one of these large language models, for example, really truly capable of. And I think we need to be very careful in how we train our staff about how to use them. But with that training, I do think that there's a lot of uh, power that these these tools can offer. Uh, in a way that I'm really excited about. You know, I think this is a transition that is sort of akin to uh, the move to the cloud was, um, or the move to mobile device devices. Um, you know, it's one of those sort of generational shifts in how technology works and how computers work that uh, I think could have a big impact. So I'm excited to see how that plays out in the coming year. Kurt, any tech trends you're looking at? Well, I maybe I'm the old guy thinking that like the, the trend that was last trend isn't done yet, but the cloud still has huge potential for us. We ultimately we want to move every single one of our systems to the cloud. That is, I'm sure everybody watching, that's still unfinished business in a lot of cases. We want to shut down data centers um, and the cloud offers us more resiliency, more scalability. Um, so we're all in with the cloud, moving all of our app applications there. I 100% agree on the AS side. It's certainly the highest hyped um, technology right now, but just think about healthcare. Healthcare is fundamentally going to change based on the application of AI. I still, I think the same thing is true in, in um, codifying decision rules in terms of benefits to veterans. As long as you can look at the end and, and quality assure those um, decisions to make sure that they are, are accurate, dead accurate, which is something actually VBA does quite well today. And we can't fall back as we introduce these new technologies. Um, one of our enterprising viewers uh, following that discussion asked what I think is a great question. Um, any plans to use generative AI to mine VA health records to improve point of care delivery within VHA? Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, there's a, a tech sprint right now that we're running um, that is focused on extracting uh, concepts or clinical concepts from medical records, um, mostly that are submitted to us from outside of the VA. Uh, basically to make it easier for us to get health insights from documents, from paper documents, or from documents that otherwise would be time consuming to review. So we are definitely looking at uh, generative AI as well as other uh, applications of, uh, you know, AI is uh, such a, a broad term, but uh, we're definitely looking at those. Um, you know, VA has one of the world's largest uh, health record repositories because we uh, we're one of the first systems in the world to adopt an electronic health record many decades ago. Uh, we, in fact, sort of invented the category in some ways. So we've got a lot of data dating back many decades. Uh, we also have a really uh, powerful and innovative research group, uh, including the program called the Million Veteran Program, in which veterans have volunteered 
to uh, provide their medical record as well as their sequenced genome for the sake of medical research. And so data like this provides a lot of opportunities for researchers to use uh, machine learning and AI and other research techniques to generate novel medical insights that could impact veterans and frankly, you know, the, the world. Uh, VA is a, a really important research institute and I think looking at how we can use these tools to make that research mission work better is something that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's not just the breadth and scale uh, of tech, but it's also the, the potential uh, in that regard. All right, last one. It's a long one, but that's okay. Uh, in the context of VA's IT modernization, what strategies are being implemented to consolidate redundant technology stacks within various programs? And what is the roadmap for transitioning to a unified enterprise system that ensures both efficiency and scalability across the board? That is an awesome question. <laughs> I think I would, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think I would highlight two things. The first thing is when you, we are building um, essentially uh, development lanes, which say, uh, or um, practice areas that say, hey, there's a triage process when a new uh, request for a functionality comes in. Can we satisfy with a, that with a low-code, off-the-shelf solution? Well, first, can we satisfy it with off-the-shelf software, SaaS? Mm -hmm. um, second, can we satisfy that with a low-code solution? And essentially get us to the point where we first uh, do the things that will create the most robust, reusable, cost-efficient solution. And then ultimately, some of the things that we need to do are going to be custom code. In those cases where it's custom code, though, um, by virtue of all the innovations been delivered by lots of different third parties, we have a lot of platforms in the VA. And we are in the process of winnowing that down to a set of platforms we will bet on and that we will build on top of. And we will need to triage all the different systems we have there and say, why can't that be on, for instance, Vapor, VO, v, VA Platform One, which is our own um, uh, core cloud uh, platform today. Uh, if it's close to the Bennett space, we already have something called the BIP, um, which is its own platform for modernizing a VBMS. So we have these kind of core platforms today. We need to standardize around those. And then we need to show the value proposition of doing that is high so that it's easy to have our dev pipelines um, deploy in a seamless way and, and able to screen code as it goes in, that it has a great monitoring framework so that you get faster alerting on problems. So it's more, it's partially about pushing people onto these platforms. It's partially about showing the value proposition. And the third thing is we just need to get um, the people that do third party development for us acclimatized to the notion that they're not gonna bring another platform for us. We don't need another platform. We need to figure out how new functionality fits into the platforms we already have. Terrific. All right, on that note, Mr. Delbeni, uh, Charles, Mr. Worthington, thank you so much for your time uh, and joining us today. Um, you know, it's very exciting, the progress that we made. It's even more exciting, the progress uh, of where we're headed. And so appreciate you sharing your vision and, and things there. Um, also like to thank our non-AI team here in the studio for helping us out today. Uh, terrific as always. And most importantly, thanks to all of you watching at home uh, or wherever you may be at your desks. Uh, encourage you to uh, continue to engage, uh, provide feedback on um, uh, subjects and things that you want to hear about. Um, just sitting here talking to Charles, I think we're due for an AI discussion here at some point once we get that up and going. So uh, that's all the time we have today. Thanks again for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Be well.